We ended our last video learning how to calculate heat energy. Now it is your turn. Let's briefly review the equation. Q equals mc delta t. And remember the delta t was always final minus initial for the temperature. So heat energy equals mass times specific heat, which is a constant, times the change in temp. At this time, please pause the video and try both of these practice problems using this equation. Please check your answers to these practice problems. The first problem is just like the example from the previous video and the previous slide. You're looking for Q. You have the mass because it's water specific heat is 4.184 and you find your change in temperature which is always final minus initial. You should get right around 56,195 and then for sig figs you round down to 2 so it becomes 56,000 joules. For the second practice problem, instead you are looking for C. So you have the mass, you have the Q, and you have your change in temp. Again, you're just using the same equation, solving for a different variable. And you should get right around 5.4, and the unit for specific heat is always joules per gram degrees Celsius. Ideally, you could have also been asked to calculate the mass or the change in temp in the exact same manner. You just plug in what you know and then solve for the missing variable using your algebra skills. Let's discuss what calorimetry is. One of the labs you'll be completing is a calorimetry based lab and so you'll need to know how to do some of these things. Calorimetry is the study of heat flow and measurement. It is measured with what is called a calorimeter. And an example calorimeter is here. It's usually a coffee cup or two for extra insulation. You have a reaction that takes place, usually in water. You have a thermometer that you measure the temperature before and after, and a cover to keep the heat in, as well as something to stir with. There are many steps to solve a calorimetry problem, and we will go through all of them. You're going to first have to calculate Qw, which is the heat energy of water. You do that using the equation from the previous slide, Q equals mc delta t. Next, you're going to need to convert your joules that you solved for into kilojoules. To do that, you very simply divide by a thousand. Then, the Q of water is equal and opposite the Q of reaction, because one has to absorb and one has to release. And therefore, you're going to change the sign on your Q of water, so this is just a sign change, so you're reversing the sign. The next step is to determine the number of moles of salt. So the practice problems are going to provide you with grams of salt, any salt, any ionic compound, and this is where you use that. To find moles, of course, you're going to take the given grams and you're going to divide by the molar mass of whatever that salt happens to be. And then finally, you take your two numbers, your kilojoules, and you divide it by your number of moles to calculate your delta H. This is a lot of steps, so we're going to practice on the next slide. These calorimetry calculations primarily pertain to the lab. So they're really important for when you get to this lab in the course. The practice problem says 32.1 grams of NH4Cl ammonium chloride is added to 125 grams of water at 28.9 degrees Celsius. The temperature then drops to 19.4 and it's asking you to calculate the delta H of the reaction. 
So we're going to follow all the steps from the previous slide. Step one is to find Q of the water. So the mass of the water is 125. The specific heat of water we know is the constant 4.184. And we need to find the change in temperature. Well, the change in temperature is always final minus initial. So it's 19.4 minus 28.9. We're going to get a negative answer here, and that's okay. So negative 9.5. When you solve that, you should get something like this, 4,969 joules. Step 2 is to convert to kilojoules. So we take our answer and we divide by a thousand. Which is really just moving the decimal three spaces. Step three, we change the sign. So it was negative, it now changes to positive. Step four, we take the other gram amount in the problem, the grams of the salt, and we convert that into moles by dividing by molar mass. So we're going to take our 32.1 grams. And I'm going to shortcut it here. The molar mass is 53. You would get that from the periodic table. And you should get right about 0 .606 moles. And then finally, step five is to take the kilojoules from step three and divide that by the moles you just calculated and when you do that you should get right about 8.20 kilojoules per mole so that's our answer that would be the delta H okay. so it's a lot of steps but it's not terrible and this is only for lab. So at this time, please pause the video and try the provided practice problem. As you can see, the answer to the practice problem should be right around negative 108 kilojoules per mole. First, I found the Q of water. I divided that by 1,000 to get kilojoules for step two. I switched the sign to negative this time for step three. Step four, I took the grams of my salt, divided by its molar mass to get moles. And finally, I took kilojoules divided by moles. This is an exothermic reaction because of the negative sign, so it should feel hot. And the problem above is an endothermic reaction because it's positive, therefore it should get cold. You'll get plenty of practice with these types of problems in the upcoming lab. Let's continue our study. Something else that's important to be able to do is calorie calculations. So this relates to food. As you may recall, one food calorie equals 1,000 real calories. So a food calorie, in essence, is a kilocalorie. For every gram of carbs, there are four kilocalories. For every gram of protein, there are also four. And for every gram of fat, there are nine. Mathematically, this is not that difficult. You're either multiplying or dividing. Here we go. It says, how many kilocalories are in a piece of cake with 25 grams of carbs, five grams of fat, and five grams of protein? All you have to do is take your 25 grams of carbs multiply by 4. You're going to add that to your 5 grams of fat, which is multiplied by 9. And you're going to add that to your 5 grams of protein, also multiplied by 4. And you end up getting 165 kcals. 
which ideally, based on the sig figs, should round up to 170 kcals. These values here will be provided, so you don't need to memorize those. Instead of asking you to calculate the number of kilocalories, you could be asked to work backwards. Instead, it would ask you to calculate grams of a specific substance. These problems will give you the total kilocalories and you'll kind of work backwards. So the first thing you want to do is you want to figure out how many calories are carbs and protein. So you'll take the 4.2 grams of carbs times 4 and you'll take your 10.1 grams of protein also times 4. You'll do the math you should get 57.2. That means the rest would be fat. So then we'll take our 82.4 total minus this 57.2 and you should get 25.2 calories. And this is the point where most people stop and they make the mistake. The problem didn't ask you how many calories of fat you had. It asks you how many grams. So you also need to take this answer and divide it by 9 because that's how many kcals are in a gram of fat. And you therefore would get 2.8 grams of fat for your answer. Okay. At this time, using this second example we just went over, as a guide, please pause the video and try the practice problem. For your answer, you should have gotten 7.8 grams of protein. Here, you had to take 8 grams of fat times 9 and add that to your 12.7 grams of carbs times 4 to get a total of 122.8. The difference from the total is 33.1, excuse me, 31.3. So 154.1 minus 122.8 gives you 31.3 kcals. And then you would divide that by 4 because this time we're asked for protein and you should end up with 7.8 grams as your final answer. The final part of the chapter is stoichiometry. So it's called heat of reaction or heat stoichiometry. Some clues on how you would know that it's this type of problem. You're going to see the chemical equation and then it's going to ask you to calculate the heat or the heat energy. There's a general equation for this. You're going to be looking for kilojoules. And then your given grams goes over 1. Then it's 1 mole divided by the molar mass of the given. And then finally, the kilojoules that are in the problem over the coefficient of just the given. Let's do the example to make this make sense. So you're going to start with your 10.3 grams of your CH4 over 1. Then it's 1 mole divided by its molar mass of 16 grams. Then the kilojoules in the problem are 802. They're in the product, so it should be a negative 802. And then the coefficient of CH4 is 1. So you would go ahead and solve that problem, and you should get right around negative 516. At this time, using the same balanced equation, please pause the video and try the practice problem. Please review your answer to the practice problem. Very similar to above, but this time the coefficient is a 2 because there are two O2s.
This concludes our study of thermochemistry.